In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my exact step-by-step -step Facebook ad strategy to launch and test products for your Shopify dropshipping store. What's going on? It's your boy Yash back again with another video. I hope each and every single one of you guys is absolutely having a great day and a great week. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Go down there and absolutely smash that subscribe button with your post notification bell on so you guys are updated with all recent uploads. And while you're at it, also smash that like button as well. It would absolutely mean the world to me. So this video can help as many people in the e-commerce space as much as possible. So guys, when it comes to utilizing Facebook ads to promote your dropshipping product, I know it can be very, very daunting especially when there's a lot of misinformation and confusion out there. At the end of the day, trust me, I don't blame you at all. Two and a half years ago, I was literally in the same situation where I heard different things from everyone and I was just super, super, super confused in terms of having a proper guided strategy that worked well for me when it came to testing products with Facebook ads. So in this video, I'm gonna be making it as simple and straightforward for you guys so you guys can effectively and properly test and launch a product for your Shopify dropshipping store. Not only are we gonna be diving into my laptop so you guys can actually see me going step by step launching all these ads, but afterwards, I'll also be giving you guys some initial scaling strategies and tips as well. With this launch slash testing and initial scaling strategy that I'm about to show you guys, you can easily get your sales up to a few hundred dollars a day on your store. This is the ultimate 2020 Facebook ads testing blueprint for your guys' e-commerce dropshipping store. The next clip will be me into my laptop, so definitely take notes and pay attention, guys. This is super value-filled information. Good luck, and let's get straight into it. And we are now in my computer, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, I'm gonna be giving you guys my ultimate low-budget Facebook ad strategy for 2020 to apply for your guys' Shopify dropshipping stores. And before we do dive into the video, if you guys already have not joined my free Facebook group, Ecom Masterminds, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description down below with all my other social media accounts. Not only am I super, super active on my Facebook group, but we talk a lot about Facebook ads and just all sorts of advertising in general relating to e-commerce. So guys, definitely check out that group and join. Before we actually move into the product and the ads manager, I want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown, more of like a game plan in terms of what to expect. So in terms of this specific strategy, we are going to be dealing with a little bit of a lower budget, meaning $3 ad sets, $5 ad sets, or $7 ad sets. For this specific example, I'm going to be using $5 ad sets. So yes, it is still very, very, very possible to deal with $5 ad sets and still succeed in your advertising game. And we are also going to have 10 ad sets as well. So we are only gonna be about spending 50 bucks a day. If you were doing $3 ad sets, you would be spending $30 per day. If you were spending $7 in ad set, you would be obviously spending $70 a day. But again, for this example, for this video, we're gonna meet in the middle and do $5 ad sets, so about $50 a day. And yes, to repeat, we are going to be using ad set budget ABO, not CBO. CBO I usually only like utilizing when scaling. If you are using CBO when testing, I highly recommend at least spending $100 a day or more. CBO does a little bit better when you are spending a little bit more aggressively. More than that, when it comes to ABO and testing, you do have a little bit more room and a little bit more control to see what's working and what's not working and where to spend and where not to spend. So again, you can highly apply this strategy for $3 ad sets, $5 ad sets, and $7 ad sets, but for the sake of this video, just to make it clear, we are going to be doing $5 ad sets and 10 ad sets to start out with. Before we obviously do move into the ads manager, make sure you have some sort of payment method hooked up to your actual business manager or ads account. And also make sure your ads account or your ads manager is in Pacific Standard Time, which is California time. That's where Facebook headquarters are. That's where Facebook operates from. So I always like having it in Pacific Standard Time. So when I set my ads at 12 a.m., which you guys will see, Facebook re-optimizes as a system 
better and your ads will perform more evenly throughout the day. Again, that's just more of a personal preference. I know a lot of people who have their ads manager in Pacific time, even though they are in Pacific time like myself, I'm in Eastern time, but I still have my ads manager in Pacific time for that specific reason. Again, it's just a personal preference and just my recommendation. Now, a lot of you guys are probably curious as to what the product is. The product is going to be the Pilates ring, which is, you know, basically a workout ring uh, mainly targeted more towards women, which they can use to do different kinds of home workouts and stuff like that. Um, I know like lately home fitness is absolutely a huge niche and it has a lot of potential to sell in. So it does have about 3,000 orders on AliExpress. This is like the highest seller or the highest supplier on AliExpress with the most number of orders. It has good reviews, good ratings. So I think this product actually has a lot of potential for those of you guys that want to go out and sell it. I mean, you can absolutely knock yourself out. I did do a little bit of research for this product prior and not a lot of people are actually selling it on Facebook. So that actually may be a good sign for you guys. But anyway, we are going to be going with the Pilates ring and we're going to be selling this at about $29.97. So about 2.5 to 3x markup, which is exactly where we want it at. I did do a little bit of research prior. Some people are selling it at 25. Some people are selling for 30, 35, 40. So I thought we would really meet in the middle ground and really sell it for about $29.97. I think that's a really, really good price to sell it at. So again, just keep it in mind that we are going to be marking it up um, to about $29.97 for the purpose of this video. Awesome, guys. So we got all that due diligence out the way, and we are now in our ads manager. And I know you guys are probably waiting for this. So let's dive straight into it without any further ado. Just a note, this is going to be as raw as possible. Me thinking out loud what my exact thought process is when I'm setting up a product so you guys can actually see the realness behind all of this. A second quick note is make sure if you do have ad blocker like I do, make sure that is off. Sometimes with that being enabled or on, some things do not work properly. So what we're going to do is first select our marketing objective, right? Our objective is conversions. Now I know a lot of people used to do like PPE or reach or traffic. However, I personally go straight to conversions regardless of the pixel being brand new and fresh, which in this case, yes, it is a new ad account or relatively new ad account and brand new pixel as well. Once we go to conversions, what we're gonna do is we're going to scroll down and I like to give my campaign name the product and what the purpose of the campaign is. So we'll do 001. We'll do Pilates uh, fitness ring. And then what I like to do is uh, cold test, cold test one. And then we'll do WC, which is website conversions forward slash PUR. Again, guys, I'm keeping this as raw as possible for you guys. So you guys see what my thought process is. Create AB test. No, we are not going to create AB test. We are going to test um, two creatives, which you guys will see in just a little bit, but I do not split test from here. You'll see how I do it. CBO campaign budget optimization. Again, we are going to keep that off. We are going to be using ABO ad set budget. After that, what you want to do is click continue. Awesome guys. So the next step, the destination we want to have is obviously website. That's where we're driving traffic to. Optimization for ad delivery conversions. Make sure you have your pixel ID install and it's a proper pixel we also want to optimize for purchase as well we always 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 optimize for purchase no matter what kind of campaign or what kind of stage of campaign we're dealing with no cost control or bid strategies or anything like that just yet conversion window to start out with i do seven day click or one day view uh, when you get charged, yes, we want to get charged per impression. Dynamic creative and offer, I usually skip that. Those are really not necessary for e-commerce motives. Those are maybe necessary for like infographics and other sorts of advertising on Facebook. Custom audience, we are not there yet. And now we are in location. So what we're going to do is edit locations. And I usually like to do people living in the location. We only want to target residents of that country, right? People actually living in that country, not people traveling, not tourists or anyone like that. Actually people residing in that physical country. So we always want to do people living in this location. Now, because of what is going on, I'm not going to say the word. Shit is getting real. 
But because of the global crisis right now, shipping and logistics is really messed up all over the country. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be only targeting the big five, US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. I know there's 20 or 30 or 40 e-packet countries and some people say, oh, input all of them in. I usually don't, even besides this video, I usually do the top five, which I just mentioned, and I do some other top tier e-packet European countries as well, such as France, such as Belgium, such as Germany, Ireland, Italy, and Switzerland. Those are the 10 or 11 countries I do in total. However, for the purpose of this video, we're only going to be doing the big five, and more than likely, guys, in the testing phase and even in the initial scaling phases, most of your traffic will be coming from the big five, let alone your sales. Awesome, so we have the United States, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, and New Zealand. We have the big five or top five countries like discussed, and we call them the big five just for those of you guys that are a little bit new because those are the countries with the biggest credit card users and the biggest and largest online spenders in general. When it comes to age, I usually just leave it by default 18 to 65. You also wanna actually know what your product is. So this is a Pilates ring and literally it can be used by anyone to get in shape or stay in shape. Whether you're 18, 50 or 60, it does not really matter. Unless it's very, very obvious that your specific product is tailored to a younger or older demographic, then you obviously wanna go ahead and change it. But for something like this, guys the Pilates ring it's really really mass usable by any woman who is into fitness or who would like to get into fitness and get better into shape therefore for that reason we are going to keep it 18 to 65 and not touch it at all in terms of gender we are going to click woman because even though technically men can use this it's more of a woman dominated product just because of the nature of the specific product so we are going to be targeting women and saving our ad bucks not by targeting men at all detail targeting we're going to skip this just for now all we're going to do is um, uncheck where it says reach people beyond your detail targeting selections when it's likely to improve performance all this really means is that if you click this facebook will go beyond that interest and explore and dive into other audiences and find potential customers for you, but it won't really be trackable as to where that sale or where that traffic is coming from. So I always, always, always leave that box unchecked. We will come back to detail targeting in just a bit. Um, connections, we usually just leave that. When it comes to languages, I usually do English because our ad copy and our website will be in English. So we always want to target English speaking Facebook users only. Placements, now a lot of people say automatic and yes, I usually do automatic too, but lately I've been starting to do manual placements and I'll explain why. Even though you do automatic, yes, you may get a few lucky sales in the beginning and you're technically letting Facebook do its work. However, you'll see, and again, most people will agree with me that when you do manual placements, and I usually do Instagram feed, Facebook feed, and Instagram story, those three placements. My reasoning behind that is even though if you do automatic placements, yes, you may get a few lucky sales in the get-go. However, once you start scaling, you'll start to see that most of your traffic, traction, and sales are coming from those three placements, Instagram story, Facebook feed, and Instagram feed. That's why from the get-go, I always do manual placements and only select those three placements rather than doing automatic placements. Great, so we have Facebook news feed and Instagram feed selected along with Instagram stories as well. Make sure you have everything else unselected, guys. Very, very important to always double make sure when you're doing all of this because Facebook ads is very, very, very sensitive sometimes. Now, when we scroll down, what we want to do is we want to set our daily budget to $5.00. So that means this specific ad set, because again, remember, this is only one ad set within the campaign we are creating. The budget of that will be five bucks. And what I also like to do is I like to schedule my ads at 12 a.m. So right now it's June 19th. I want to schedule it the next day, June 20th at 12 a.m. I always do that again because Facebook re-optimizes as a system at 12 a.m. And more than that, your budget will be spent evenly throughout the day. If your ad started at 7 p.m., you know it's only going to have five hours to spend throughout the whole day. If it starts at, again, 4 p.m., it's only going to have about eight hours to spend your specific budget throughout the whole day. Cool, so now we get to the fun part, which is the detail targeting, which is where your interest is going to go. The reason why I saved this part for the end is because you want to make sure 
you do all these settings first in these specific ad sets, such as the gender, the country, the placements, the budget, all that stuff, because you want to see what your potential reach is, right? What your potential audience size for this interest or interest will be. So that's why I always, always, always like to save it for the end. When it comes to interest, this is how I like to frame it in my head, okay? The interest is X. Just remember, X, the variable, is an interest. So I like to frame it as who will be interested into X being the interest that will be also interested in buying or purchasing my product. So X can be a person, a brand, a public figure, a celebrity, a chef, a TV show, blog, magazine. It can literally be anything when it comes to Facebook interest. The broader you go and the farther you go and the more unique you go, the better it will be. Such as if you're selling a dog product, think about how many people are choosing dog lovers as an interest. A lot of people because a lot of advertisers, a lot of dropshippers are lazy. So what I like to do is I like to pick a few generic ones that will come to you know anyone's mind like, I don't know, fitness, gym, weight loss, right? Those are very, very very on the surface, not as unique. So I, I like to pick a few generic ones, and then I also like to pick a few unique ones that many people may not even really think of. You know, again, all those categories that I mentioned earlier, such as brands and magazines and TV shows and whatnot. So my main goal is to get my potential reach about five to 50 million. If it's a little bit over 50 or 60 million, that's okay, but you want your potential reach, your audience size right here, to be at least five million. Now, usually all my ad sets are single interest ad sets, meaning with only one interest. However, sometimes I do stack targeting. Stack targeting is basically having multiple interests in one specific ad set. However, if I do stack target, I will only stack target if my potential reach is below that five million threshold. So if an interest is really, really good, and it's below five million, maybe I'll stack target one or two interests to get it above five to seven million. You can only stack target interests that are very, very similar because they have the same audiences, right? So you cannot, for example, stack target Sephora, which is a makeup brand with a outdoors brand such as the North Face because they have two different audiences. But can you, for example, stack target Sephora, which is a makeup brand with another makeup brand called Mac? Yes, absolutely you can because those are very similar audiences. So throughout setting up this product, you'll see that I am choosing a few stack interests per ad set too, and I'll explain why I decided to go with that specific interest. Nonetheless, most of the time, I do prefer single interest. Again, I will only stack interest target if I really, really, really need to, if it's a really good interest and I feel it has to be a little bit bigger. Again, the broader you go is a little bit better when it comes to cold testing because you want to let Facebook see who your potential customer is and the larger the pool, the better it really is. So first and foremost, what really comes onto my mind, and again, you can use Google, you can use the Facebook ads audience finder, which I'll be leaving a link right there to find potential interest. Because I have it in this space for some while now, you know, I'm using my market intuition, market logic. The other bigger thing is you have to really, really, really know your product and what your potential customer is or what your audience or buyer persona really is to really get the best out of your interest. Because remember, your interest or your cold testing campaign will really set the tone of the rest of your campaign journey or it will really say you know how much you can actually scale or how much it will really hinder your potential journey as well so you really have to take your time when it comes to interest targeting again use the facebook audience you know builder the audience finder um, or the interest finder whatever you call it use google use your intuition use your logic um, really tap into that specific product and really you know, ask who your potential buyer really, really may be. Again, guys, this is super important, and this is why a lot of people lose when it comes to, you know, testing and launching their product. So going back to what I was going to say is the first thing that comes into my mind since this is a Pilates ring is Pilates. Okay, so let's see um, what interest this is. So this is an interest of 46 million people. Obviously, that will adjust um, after we click on it. Awesome, so that's 12 million. I do want to do one more interest. For those of you guys that don't know what Pilates are, it's basically a form or type of exercise. And the person who invented Pilates or who actually started the whole thing 
is um, his name is actually Joseph Pilates. So let's see if our man Joseph Pilates is an interest. Um, again, they're very, very similar, and he is absolutely an interest of 3 million. So what we're going to do is click that and then let the audience size adjust. Cool. So the total audience size is still about 12 million. By the way, you can completely ignore this. Facebook will, you know, throw at you suggestions and stuff like that. This ad set may get zero purchases, or we recommend, um, you know, having your landing page to something else, but just totally ignore that. As long as you know what you're doing, you don't always have to follow what Facebook is saying. Cool guys, so that should be done in terms of the settings of the ad set. What we wanna do now, again, ignore this. This ad set may get zero purchases. It says use landing page views as your optimization for delivery. What? So we, again, just wanna ignore that. Now we're gonna actually move on to the actual ad creative or the ad itself. So usually I like to split test two creatives. I like to not only go with one because you don't want to hinder the potential of your product. Obviously, sometimes I will do a carousel ad or single image ad too if the product doesn't need as much explanation, if it doesn't need a lot of demonstration or unfolding, if it's a little bit more self-explanatory like accessories or clothing or something like that. However, a product like this that does need explanation, that does need unfolding, maybe you know showing how it's used and stuff like that, you do absolutely need a video. That's why in this case, I have two videos and two thumbnails ready to go. So my first thumbnail, um, it says number one home workout tool, stay fit anywhere. It has actually a woman using the Pilates ring with the arrow pointing to it. It's very clean, very nice. Again, the main purpose of your thumbnail is to grasp people's attention, to really entice people and really show what they're about to get into. Because remember, on Facebook, there's two types of settings. There's one type of setting when people are scrolling through their newsfeed, they'll see the preview of your thumbnail really quick when they actually get to your ad, and the video will start playing right away. The another kind of setting that people have, and again, this all depends on the user and how they have their settings, I believe, is they'll actually see the thumbnail and they'll actually give an option for people to play or click the video as well. So regardless if people have it on autoplay or manual play where they actually see the thumbnail and actually have to click on it to play the video, you want to make sure our thumbnail is enticing. That will obviously, you know, impact our click-through rate, our video watch time. It will really impact everything and all of the above. The other thumbnail we have is, again, number one home workout tool. This time, a lady is actually grabbing it. There's like a nice outline around the Pilates ring just so it stands out with another arrow to it. So again, human perception is very important. Actually, someone showcasing, using, or demonstrating the product is very, very powerful and very effective, especially when it comes to products like these. So when I like to split test, I only like to split test or change up one variant. So we're gonna use one video or the same video, and we're gonna split test both of the thumbnails. So we're gonna have video A, with thumbnail A and then we're gonna have video A with thumbnail B. So that means each ad set, guys, we're gonna have 10 ad sets. Each ad set will be split testing or testing or spending its money to video A and thumbnail A and also with video A and thumbnail B. Imagine this is your ad set A. Again, the budget, the five bucks, will be split testing to the first video with the first thumbnail, and I'll also be spending to the first video with the second thumbnail as well. We're basically gonna be split testing like this, and that's gonna be for every single ad set to see which one gets us more clicks, more watch time, and just more traction in general. And if you do wanna see the video really, really quick, guys, I'm going to click on the video right now so you guys can actually see on how I structure my winning creative. Not only is actually the ad very important, but everything else obviously is super, super important. You do need a collective congruent view on everything. So again, the first five seconds of the video is very important. You know, you want to make sure that it's a scroll stopper, right? Because again, Instagram and Facebook, they're forms of interruptive marketing. So you want to basically interrupt someone's pattern and get them curious. That's why not only is your thumbnail super important, but also your video in the first five seconds is very important, right? It has to entice people and get people's attention. Again, I have my watermark just so it looks branded and no one can steal it. I have some captions, background music, 
and um, I you know I really really make sure the video is as HD and clear as possible those are all the qualities I really really make sure to implement when it comes to my creative or my video Awesome. So 30 to 45 seconds is really an ideal time to keep your video. In your video, we really want to talk about your product again. This differentiates product to product, but for most problem solving and convenience products, you really want to talk about the features and the benefits and also more importantly, the end result of that specific product too. So that's what it's doing with the different um, you know, segments of the videos with the different captions and stuff like that. If you can see, you know, it talks about helping you achieve that slim and toned shape. It talks about, you know, deeply strengthening your muscles and whatnot. So basically, guys, you get the gist. Um, if you guys want to actually know where I get my videos from, I actually partner with a company called Ecom Creations. They're super, super good at what they do. I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below so you guys can actually get 10% off of all of your Facebook ad creative needs. Obviously make sure you have your Facebook page connected also with your Instagram page connected as well. You want to make sure that you're advertising from both. The next thing you want to do is actually add media and we actually want to add our first video. After the video is uploaded, it may take some time just to warning depending on your internet connection. What we want to do is update the first thumbnail. Remember, we're using the same video, however, we're going to be split testing with two different thumbnails per individual ad set. So what we want to do is we want to go to thumbnail and then we want to go to manual. Awesome. So we have inputted the first video in the first thumbnail. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give this ad a name and we're going to call it video, video one, oops, video one and thumbnail one just to keep track of everything right it's super super important to actually stay organized and everything the next thing what you want to do is to input your website URL so make sure that URL is basically your main landing page where you are actually driving traffic to in this case we obviously just put google.com display link is totally optional sometimes I leave it blank sometimes I'll put like a bitly link which is a shortened version of your URL or sometimes I'll just put the home page as well just to represent the entire website so home page URL product page URL is fine or you can just absolutely leave it blank without any issue call to action I also just keep shop now the only time I use learn more is if the product needs some sort of unfolding or some sort of demonstration for example this may not be the best example but for example the back posture corrector um, you know that product basically improved people's posture and stuff like that so people are naturally curious like how does this work how does this occur how do I use this so for a product like that, potentially you can have a call to action such as learn more or split test it with shop now or learn more. Nonetheless, for e-commerce dropshipping, more than 90% of the time, you will be using a shop now call to action because it's very obvious that people are obviously going to be buying a specific product and that's why they're clicking on that button. But just so it makes sense that it is sometimes beneficial or it does sometimes make sense to use a learn more call to action in some minute products. So just to save a little bit of time guys, I already have my primary text, my headline and my description already made an input. However, I do want to go over it with you guys. So starting with the description, I like to again create some sort of urgency, some sort of scarcity when it comes to the description. So in this case, I put free exercise sheet included. Again, your offer is very important when it comes to any sort of advertising. And again, this is also included in my website. So again, it's like a nice incentive. Like, oh, I also get a free exercise sheet with the Pilates ring as well, or with the trainer ring. Another thing you can put is something like free global shipping, limited time only, exclusive pre-summer sale, or um, you know, 10,000 plus happy customers something to invoke curiosity, something that's more of an incentive, something that is more of you know an urgency or scarcity factor as well. So there's no right or wrong when it comes to description. I just like to put basically something that invokes that sort of scarcity and urgency in people. 
When it comes to headline, I like to put something directly related to the product, more of like a bold statement, right? So I put number one home workout tool because that's what really the product is. You can also put something like the product name. However, I do like to put something else because more than likely the product name will be mentioned in the primary text. So you do not want to be repetitive. Number one home workout tool or get fit or get in shape in 30 minutes, something that is bold and something that is directly related to the product is absolutely fine to put when it comes to the headline. Your primary text, this is your main part of the actual ad. This is what will get people into that pre-buying phase. So what I like to do is keep it very simple. I like to have a hook and that hook is the top part right here of my actual primary text. And I will always like to have the first letter of the word capitalized. So the hook is basically like, you know, making something aware that people are dealing with right now or making something aware that people may want right now, right? Especially a problem solving and convenience product like this, okay? Um, problem solving because it has to do with people's physical appearance. Um, it's also kind of a passion product because people who don't like fitness or wellness obviously aren't going to buy this and convenience because it's very light and very portable and it really has a whole bunch of workouts you can do with something so 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 simple so it says make the most of your at home fitness routine with our innovative dual grip training ring again it says the name of the product so you don't want to be repetitive and include it in the headline in less than 30 minutes with an emoji with hard eyes again i only like to use about two or three emojis that are relevant i don't like to overdo it with emojis because that does take away from the professionalism of your overall brand let alone of your ad copy then what we have are some features so builds muscle alleviates hip pain ultra lightweight and portable tones and strengthens core arm legs, thighs, and buttocks. And then on the bottom, it's like a little bit of a aggressive call to action, such as grab your ears at 40% off with a little arrow. And I have a bit.ly link that is customized. You can just go to bit.ly.com and actually shorten the link to not input your entire website over there. You can also put like grab yours here at 40% off plus free shipping or grab yours here at, I don't know, 60% off or buy one, get one free, whatever deal you're really running. I mean, if you have like free shipping or 40% off here, then obviously you want to include something else over here, like grab yours here, limited time only, or something like that. So you really want to play around with it and see kind of what is the best placement when it comes to your wordings. However, this is really how I like to do it. I will say again, grab yours here at 40% off with a little bit of an arrow with the actual bit.ly link. You'll also see that I'm not using the green check marks if you guys are familiar with emojis. I'm using the black check marks because it is a little bit more unique and a little bit less aggressive as well. I just feel like the green check marks are super, super outplayed and everyone literally uses them. This just looks a little bit more clear. So guys, that is the completion of the actual ad. Now what we're gonna do is go down and press confirm so it will publish. Awesome, so we have our first ad set published. Obviously, if you already did not change the name, you do wanna change the name, and I like to put all my ad set names, the name of the interest or the interest we have in that specific ad set. So what we're gonna do is put Pilates plus Joseph Pilates, just to keep track of that. After what we're gonna do is go to ads, make sure um, obviously this specific ad set is selected, and then we want to go to ads. When it comes to the ads for this specific ad set, we want actually two ads. Remember going back, not only do we want video one and thumbnail one, but we also want video one and thumbnail two to split test it. So all we're going to do, and you'll see this is very, very simple, is we press duplicate. After we press duplicate, yes, we want it in the original campaign. So again, guys, each ad set will be having two creatives to spend its budget towards. The first ad set, Pilates and Joseph Pilates, will spend its budget to video one and thumbnail one, and also to video one and thumbnail two as well. So all we're changing is one variant, which is a thumbnail. So what we're gonna do is, as you can see, we have video one right here. All we're going to do is click on edit video. What we wanna do after is again, the same exact process, go to thumbnail. And then after we go to thumbnail, we wanna go to manual and press upload. 
So now we have our second thumbnail uploaded and what I also did again to keep track and to be organized is I put video one and thumbnail two before we obviously had thumbnail one over here. What we're gonna do after is publish this specific ad. Perfect, just what we wanted. So now we have video one, thumbnail one, and video one, thumbnail two when it comes to this specific ad set, Pilates and Joseph Pilates. So now the budget will be distributed to both of the ads just how we want it. What we're gonna do next is very, very simple. So obviously we are going to have 10 ad sets in this specific campaign, right? Our campaign is the cold testing campaign. So for the actual other nine ad sets, all we're gonna do guys is super easy. We're going to press duplicate and because we're gonna duplicate this, the rest of the ad sets will also have both of the ads as well. That's why I like to do it this way. I like to have one ad set with both of the ads or ad creatives that you're going to be using in split testing. And then all I like to do is just duplicate. Once you duplicate, all you're willing to do is just change the interest ad set to ad set to ad set. All the other settings and everything else will just literally carry right over, which is the best and most effective part of this strategy. Now there's another way you can do it as well. You can also duplicate it once and then again, change the interest and then publish it, then do it again, rinse and repeat. How I like to do it, just keep it super simple, is I like to do number of copies of each ad set. I like to do it to nine. So we're gonna basically be duplicating Pilates plus Joseph Pilates nine more times, but we're obviously gonna be swapping out the interest in that specific ad set. What you wanna do after is you'll basically get this screen right here. And what I like to typically do is just scroll all the way to the bottom and work my way up. That's literally the easiest way to do this without confusing yourself. At the bottom will be your most original ad set, which we first created, which is, again, Pilates plus Joseph Pilates. So then I basically just like to work my way up from there. One really quick thing I did forget to mention, guys, and I apologize this, is for every single ad set, I'm actually back in the first original ad set right here. Since I forgot to do it and explain it to you guys, is for every single ad set, after you input your interest or interest, I like to exclude it by two things, by AliExpress and by drop shipping as well. We don't want our ads to potentially reach those people because these people may be other potential drop shippers. As you can see, I've excluded, not narrowed down, but excluded AliExpress and drop shipping and our potential reach audience size has gone down a little bit from 12 million to 10 million, which is absolutely normal. It will probably go down anywhere from one to five million after you narrow it down, or sorry, after you exclude by AliExpress and dropshipping. So we wanna carry this over to every single ad set, not only the first one, I just forgot to do it, so I'm getting that out right now to you guys. So again, you wanna have your interest, interest, and for every, every single ad set when you're testing, you do wanna exclude one AliExpress and two dropshipping. You do not wanna narrow down by engage shoppers. I don't care what anyone says, do not do it, that will, really, really yield you in higher CPMs because that interest is really outplayed and overused. What I'm gonna do is actually input my interest for the rest of the nine ad sets just so it saves a little bit of time. After that, you'll basically see all of the ad sets are ready to go and are scheduled. The next screen, you'll actually see me with all the interests inputted in all of the ad sets. Awesome, guys, here we go. So now we have our 10 ad sets so from the bottom going up, we have Pilates plus Joseph Pilates, which is what we first initially created together. After that, I decided to do Fabletics plus Gymshark, which is actually a gym fitness apparel company. Then I did Yoga, My Fitness Pal, Weight Watchers. Then I also like to do actually one ad set, keep it completely open. Broad targeting has been working really, really well for the past few months for me. So I like to keep it completely open. What I do is I just keep it excluded by AliExpress and dropshippers like we do for all our, of the other ad sets. However, I do not put any interest. Even the audience size is probably like 100 or 150 million. I keep it like that, but I keep it completely, completely open. More than likely, if a product is really mass targetable, such as the Pilates ring, open and broad targeting ad sets do really, really well. So I kept it again, no interest targeting, just completely open, just to test it out. After that, I did running plus jogging, which is stack interest health and wellness, physical exercise, and physical trainer. So 
all these audiences or all these interests or ad sets really keeps in mind what we talked about, about the criteria of five to 50 million or a little bit more sometimes in the case of like open. Um, and it also kept in mind of, again, companies, brands, magazines, um, just different sorts of interests. Not all of these are super generic. A lot of these, you know, I did a little bit of research into really kind of thought about who my potential buyer would be. Again, who would be interested into X, X being the interest, that will be also be interested in buying my specific product. So that's really what I did. Again, guys, double down on your interest and really, really, really spend the time that's needed so your entire journey is set in place. Another thing that's super important is I see a lot of you guys not having your columns set up properly. Your columns are super important. As you can see, I've customized them to Ecom. So I'm actually going to scroll right. And if you guys actually want to copy my columns, really, really feel free to do so. I mean, these KPIs and metrics and data points are super important to have, um, especially like your clicks, your cost per clicks, your CTRs, your CPMs, video plays, add to carts, initiate checkouts. Um, your ad payment info, purchases, amount spent, ROAS, um, purchase conversion value, your website purchase conversion, and your cost per purchase or your CPP. This is really how I set up my column so everything's organized and everything is in place as well. So you can definitely go ahead and copy mine or just really kind of use mine as a benchmark. Make sure that you have the necessary data in front of you to read it and to make guided decisions from it. Once again, guys, all these are scheduled for 12 a.m. and each ad set does have two ads. So we have one campaign, we have 10 ad sets, and we have 20 ads. Because remember, each interest or one interest has two ads or two creatives we're gonna be split testing. So again, one campaign, 10 ad sets, and 20 ads, just to kind of break it down for you guys. What I'm gonna do after is kind of show you guys an initial scaling strategy as to what to do after these guys go live and they start running, what kind of steps to really initially take to start getting your few hundred dollars in sales consistently or even a thousand or two thousand dollars in sales consistently. I mean, that is really, really profitable with your first few campaigns in terms of cold targeting. The next screen will be kind of me breaking some things down for you guys in terms of initial scaling strategies. So these numbers start to pop out for you guys. Once your ads are scheduled and they're actually running and live, what you want to do after is obviously initially scale, right? You want to double down on what's working and cut back on what's not working. That's what really scaling is. The more money you feed Facebook in terms of what's working, the more money it will spit back at you. The other important thing you guys have to realize is that you're always, always, always testing. Not only are you testing in the beginning, in the get-go with those two different creatives or those two different thumbnails, However, even when you're scaling, you're testing different things as well to see which ad set performs better, to see what edits perform better, to see what budgets perform better or what sort of campaigns are working better, okay? So testing is a continuous process that you always should be doing. Obviously, we have one campaign, 10 ad sets, and 20 ads. The 10 ad sets are at $5 a day. So I recommend at least, at least letting it run for 72 hours. My rule of thumb is that if you're spending anything less than 75 bucks, you at least let it run for three days for it to optimize as your ad sets will be in the learning phase. You don't want to rush. A lot of people make misguided decisions, rush decisions. You can't really let your campaign spend like 30, 40 bucks and say that, oh, I'm not gonna you know, go forward with this product. Because obviously your campaign is new, your ad sets are new. Facebook has to find your potential customer, especially if your ad account and your pixel are brand new. So you have to let it do its thing. You have to be patient and let it spend for at least 72 hours if you're spending anything less than 75 bucks. 75 or 100 bucks or more, two days or 48 hours is absolutely okay. However, since we're dealing with the lower budget strategy here with three, five, and seven dollar ad sets, 72 hours is absolutely okay. After those 72 hours, again, we wanna cut back on what's not working first. So what we're gonna do initially is look at each ad set. Any ad set with no add to cart, no initiate checkout, or no purchase, you want to cut back or you basically want to turn off, okay? So if an ad set or multiple ad sets, which probably will be the case, do not have any active cards, 
any sheet check ads or purchases, you want to turn those off. You also want to kill or turn off any ad sets that have a cost per click CPC above $1.50. You want this number to be ideally below a dollar. Also, any ad sets that have a CPM, which is cost per 1,000 views or impressions, over 25 bucks, you also want to turn that specific ad set off as well. Now, obviously, you do not want to only go based off of one metric, meaning only CPC or only purchases or only CPM. You want to make a collective decision. I say that because sometimes my best days in terms of ROAS or purchases are the days where I have a little bit higher CPMs. Sometimes higher CPMs does mean a better quality of traffic. So if obviously your ad set has a sale or two and the CPMs is like 22 or 23 bucks, then you want to obviously keep it on. You know, you don't want to keep it off just because of the CPM. But if it's gotten like no active car and no initiate checkout and no purchase, obviously and your CPMs are like 30 bucks, then you obviously want to turn it off. More than likely, all of your ad sets that are performing well, the KPIs and the metric points will support each other. So that is the good thing. You'll basically see that pattern or trend. Another thing is you want your click through rate or your CTR for cold interest targeting or for cold audiences to be between one to 3%. That is usually my rule of thumb. If it's not one or 3%, then it's either your ad copy or your ad creative that really needs some tuning. Furthermore, after you did all of that, you also want to go into each singular ad set and you also want to turn off any creative that is not working for the specific ad set. So let's say we had Joseph Pilates and Pilates, right? our first actual interest that we created or our first ad set we want to go into it if that one is still obviously on after we turned off the ones that didn't meet this criteria right here and we want to see if there's some discrepancy between the two creatives or between the two ads if one ad is getting you know way higher link clicks and i'm talking more than 60 70 percent of the data way higher link clicks, way higher watch time, more initiate checkouts, maybe two of your sales have been from that creative, um, way lower CPMs, lower CPCs, then that one is obviously doing well for that specific interest. So you want to go ahead and turn the other one off. That's why I say if applicable, sometimes you'll see that they're both evenly getting a good amount of data, a good amount of traction. In that case, you want to leave it on. So you want to go ad set by ad set and see if there's any discrepancy and see if you want to leave both of them on and let it run and make a decision further down the line after a few days of spending more and acquiring more data or there's a very 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 obvious discrepancy in terms of one ad set or one creative working over the other so that's absolutely what you want to do as well to prevent Facebook or that specific ad set from spending money to that creative that is not really bringing you a lot of sales or a lot of traction let's say hypothetically guys you have three on and seven off out of the ten ad sets so let's keep or let's call the three ad sets a B and C ad set a ad set B and ad set C what you can do after is duplicate each ad set. So meaning I'll duplicate A, I'll duplicate B, and I'll duplicate C within the same campaign. And all I would do is I would double the budget to $10. You can also double it to 15, but again, we're dealing with a lower budget strategy here. So you can double it to 10 bucks and you schedule that new ad set at 12 a.m. Remember, that is a new ad set now, so we're scheduling that to 12 a.m. after doubling the budget. What you can also do, and not a lot of people talk about this, is increase the budget of each ad set. A lot of people only talk about duplicating, 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 which is obviously good because you want to vertically scale, right? Vertically scale is obviously upping or increasing the budget. That's what kind of scaling this really is. That's obviously what you can do as well, edit the budget, because again, no ad set will have the same DNA, guys. Remember, even if you're duplicating a certain ad set, such as ad set A, and increasing the budget, that increased budget ad set will not have the same DNA. No ad set will have the same DNA. Just because of the settings are duplicated and edited, does not mean it will carry over that same DNA, okay? So not only do you wanna do that, but you also wanna edit each of the ad sets A, B, and C and raise and double the budget to 10 bucks. That is, again, another form of vertical scaling that you guys wanna implement. And you guys can follow that raising or doubling like 50 or 100% every 48 to 72 hours as long as it is consistent. We want consistent ROAS return on ad spend which is very very important one other note you do want to know your bp roas which is your break even point roas meaning what sort of roas you need for that ad set to be profitable 
unprofitable or break even. That is very, very, very important to decide, especially once you're scaling. Because right now, any ROAS typically or any purchase is really good. All we're doing is really establishing proof of concept. So again, you can follow that strategy every 48 to 72 hours in terms of duplicating and doubling the budget or increasing it, and also editing the ad set and doubling the budget as well. And no, editing the ad set and doubling or increasing the budget does not put it back into its learning phase or it does not re-optimize. It should not even go back into being scheduled. It should just keep running. That's why I usually like to edit and increase it towards the night when the ad cycle spending has almost finished. So it has that new fresh budget to spend towards the next day. The final thing you can do, this is a formation of horizontal and vertical scaling, is put those three ad sets that are working into like a $75 or $100 CBO and see how they perform over the next few days. So not only are we vertically scaling these first two strategies, but we're also vertical and horizontally scaling, almost like a mixture hybrid scaling. Shout out John X Paul into what we're doing right here, which is the three ad sets into a $100 CBO. So we would basically take mark the three ad sets and duplicate them into a new CBO campaign and keep everything else the same. Last but not least, we also want to strictly horizontally scale as well. You always want to keep testing new interests and new audiences in the beginning, you know, considering or assuming some of these ad sets have been popping off for you guys. So what you want to do is replace three to five of these seven ad sets you guys turned off after those 72 hours with you know, with newer ad sets, with newer interests that are similar and alike to the ones that are already working. So again, all you can do is really go into them, replace the interest and just turn that specific ad set back on and see how they perform over the next two or three days. Treat those like a brand new ad set. That is my initial scaling strategy, guys. I hope this was informative for you guys. Obviously, I'm not gonna jump into like advanced scaling and lookalikes and um, advanced vertical and horizontal and hybrid scaling and custom audiences and the whole nine yards because that would confuse you guys but with this setup and this strategy and this layout guys it's very easily possible to get into a few hundred dollars a day in revenue and i'm talking about like five six seven eight hundred dollars a day in revenue if you guys remember in that screenshot i put during the beginning of the video i'll put it up again right here within a week's time frame or even less i was already doing you know a thousand dollars or more a week so again this is very very possible you know assuming you have the right product the right offer the right product page the right funnel and all that stuff guys this is very very effective and very possible at a lower strategy rate as well go out there and implement this strategy again this strategy has worked over and over and over for me this is the same strategy I use a little bit different for a higher budget because that's what I personally use a little bit of a higher budget but even for many of my clients this has been very very, very, very effective in terms of setting up, laying out, structuring, and that initial scaling as well for your Facebook ads, for your Shopify dropshipping store. So go out there, implement this, guys. Good luck. If you guys have any questions, thoughts, concerns, drop them in the comments below. I always make sure to reply to each and every single one of you guys. Go out there, go kill it, go crush it, go absolutely own 2020 and demolish e-commerce. However you guys want to implement this, take action, stay blessed. Let me know what other video ideas you guys want to see. Comment them below. With that being said, I will see you guys soon. Peace.